Ladies and oh, ladies and gentlemen, coming at you live from the beautiful Minneapolis metropolitan area. This is Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch and raising money for Doctors Without Borders. My name's Iggy Zig. I'm going to be your host for the next run, which is going to be in any percent of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap by Quo. That's right, the little green guy is going to be going small, but he's definitely going fast. And you're definitely going to want to stick around for it because it is coming up now. So let me throw it over to Quo. Now, first off, who's hyped for some Zelda? No, come on, let me hear you. That very warm welcome. Thanks, guys. Let me throw it on over to Quo. Take it away. <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think we're pretty much ready to get started. Yep. So I'll give a countdown. I need to like, sort of time it. Uh, three, two, one, go. Close up. Woo! Cutscenes, yeah. All right, uh, so this is the Minish Cap. I'm Quo. I'm best known for being the fastest Pokemon photographer on the planet. <laughs> uh, I'm also uh, no longer top five in this game. I have a large resentment for a certain somebody who uh, <laughs> kicks me out of top but, five. But, but you're still sub two at the very least. Sub, sub two, top six. Yeah. You're top sub one fifty-two fifty-two. Yeah. That's true. That's the important one. Uh, I've got my co-commentators here. I'm Esgrunt. I'm BB, and that's Hatsune Miku in the Minish Cap. <laughs> the most important comment. The most important yes. one. All right, uh, so Minish Cap came out in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I'll be playing on Wii U. Um, has a few differences, mostly faster saving, but uh, it's just for convenience and for the nice pro controllers that doesn't rip apart your palms mm -hmm. when you use it. Um, apart from that... So the first thing that's going to be in this game is text. Uh, text in Minish Cap is actually really nice because mm -hmm. the way it works is you hold B and then you can press pretty much any button, I believe, to uh, advance the text. Yeah, one of the nice things about having the Wii U controller is you can rotate the, the direction pad to skip text as per as basically as quickly as possible. Yeah, you can basically mash almost frame perfectly. Yeah. It's very nice. Uh, having run this on an actual Game Boy in the past, it's much nicer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Quo is using the Pro Controller, like we mentioned, which yeah. has a thumbstick. Yeah. So just holding B, um, mashing A, mashing R, and spinning the control stick is just the way you mash text. Is. It's pretty nice. Yeah, so the beginning of the game is pretty heavy on cutscenes, but it still has a few cool things. Um, coming up, once we stop talking, we'll get there. All right, so we need uh, specifically 110 rupees for the entire run. Yep. Uh, if I'm lucky, this will be a blue pot. Awesome. Good. Whoa. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, with some very specific movement, um, we can manipulate basically getting 20 rupees worth of blue rupees over the course of the first bit of the run. Yeah. Or will we manipulate five, we uh, get drops from the rest because yep. well, it's a different. Uh, There's alternate routes that manipulate more at the beginning, but the one Quo's yep. opting to do only manipulates that one blue yeah. rupee. Yeah. So we got the blue rupee. Um, there are a few manipulations in this run. We'll go over them when they happen, but not uh, not too many things can be manipulated just because it's uh, not viable in this game. Yeah, historically there hasn't been a heck of a lot of manipulation. Most of the manipulations that you're going to see are relatively recent inventions found in the past three years or so. Some yeah. of them are extremely recent. We'll mention those when we get to them. Some are like two weeks old. Yep. All right, so we get the shield here. We will use the shield a lot. Well, not as lo not a lot, <laughs> okay. but doing some very important things. But yeah, we'll use it a few times here, and then like once later, and that's about it. Yeah, the most All important right. part of the run later on. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, this two viewer might notice that I'm abusing a glitch here by holding the control stick in a direction and pressing the R button. Uh, we confuse the game and propel Link in the direction he's facing. It's called rolling. Yeah. Uh, VB was the one who found that, so big shout out to yeah. VB. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. found rolling. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, for. Um, um, yeah. You're going to see seeing a lot of rolling throughout the run because over most distances, uh, you know, shorter than two or three screens or thereabouts, it's the fastest form of movement. You'll be seeing a lot of it. Yeah. All right, so we need to deliver the sword to the mayor. Um, there's actually a way to soft lock the game right at the mirror, so it didn't happen, which is nice. Yeah. That's uh, frame perfect, because this game loves its frame perfect glitches. Uh, and yeah, there's about cutscenes for a minute and a half, so if we have time for donations, now's a really good time. Yep. 
No problem, Quo. I got plenty for you. I got Squidward sent us $10. He says, we love you, Quo. You are a legend. Shout Thanks out to GDQ man. for being amazing. Greenies from Texas. <laughs> yeah! What? He's like right... <laughs> I can see him. He's not in Texas. He's lying to you. <laughs> uh, Kev9991 sent us $25. No, he sent us, I'm sorry, $250. He says, hey, Quo, it's Kevin from the practice room. Good luck. <laughs> nice, nice. My best friend we met earlier. <laughs> We've got time for a couple more. All right, sounds good. Uh, the Vinyl Knight sent us $25. She says, hello from Edmonton. I've convinced my boss to have this event streaming in our store. And though I can't watch while working, it's great to listen to in the background. Thanks for putting on these events throughout the year. I look forward to watching when I can later on. So uh, something I guess we can talk about is this game's history at JDQ, because the last time this was ran was... Why is that funny? Uh, <laughs> it was uh, AGDQ 2017 yep. Yep. by uh, my dad, DP, uh, DBX, yep. who... Um, the run was pretty different back then. Uh, yeah. The first half is pretty much the same uh, with some minor differences, but in the second half you're going to be seeing a lot of differences, namely the introduction of magical boomerang glitches, which were found by uh, Toad's Boot, who's an extremely talented runner of this game and a very good friend of mine, which may be why I'm on the couch. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Toad's paid me. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of DBX, though, he promised that he would donate $20 for me to not dab at the end of the run. <laughs> well, I'm calling you out. I don't want to do it, but I will if money's on the line. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, as long as you don't die at the end of the run, we're, we're there fine. There you go, exactly. Um, but yeah, last time was 2017, DBX ran. And then two years before that was a Troze. Yep. Yeah, in 2015. And then there's another run uh, earlier that uh, we'll swim over for now. Yeah. Anyways, the constant is that the last three runs, vb has been on the couch. That's really why he's here. I just want him to be good luck. I don't know why. I don't run this game. I just, uh, I'm sick, I guess. I don't know. You, you, you do know the game, at least. That's debatable. Yeah, it, it does not make that. You found rolling. Yeah. <laughs> I did use to run this game. It's been about three and a half years, so I would be most familiar with the run that, with the route that DBX took the last time he was here. Oh. Uh, All right, uh, as far as story goes, uh, the king sends us on a quest to go fix a sword that uh, Vadi broke. So basically, we're on our way to meet the Minish right now. Um, yeah, not much going on right now, just uh, we'll get a hat soon. <laughs> a hat soon. <laughs> It'll look a lot like the one that I'm attempting to wear and failing to wear. Uh, <laughs> oh no. The oh, no. plan fell apart. Really I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> I'll just put this back where I found it. Um, but yeah, this is Link, no cap. Uh, yeah. Soon he's going to be with the cap, yeah. the Minish cap. The uh, eponymous Minish cap. <laughs> yeah. It actually has the name and it's Ezlo. Yeah. So Ezlo is really important this run. Uh, the most important thing it does is that if you look closely, uh, right here, she, uh, or he rather, he. Yeah, he pushes you a few pixels. That's the most important thing it does all game. <laughs> Other than that, completely useless. He's a, he's a little bit more useful than that, but... <laughs> okay, mostly. I didn't give him that much credit, but yeah. still. Uh, so one of the main game mechanics, if you ever played this game, is shrinking. Yeah. Uh, so Ezel lets you shrink. That's, that's pretty that, much that's, it. That, that is the most important thing that Ezel lets you do. Probably, actually. Yeah. Stay hydrated. Hasn't been an hour yet. What are you talking about? Oh, you're right. Okay. Come on. Oh, yeah. So, as you can see, Link is small now. Um, you can't do very much in this state. You drown instantly. <laughs> so, it's uh, technically possible to make that early cycle there, but nobody's ever done it in real time. Uh, yeah. People have done it real time, but not in a run. Not in runs. Yeah. Uh, Toads has done it once after, like... A long time of just safe stating. Yeah, the, 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 the tool assisted run of this, I believe. Made by Quo. Does yeah. that. Yeah. And some That's other people. True, I guess. Tompa. I should mention that. Yeah. Shout out to Tompa. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Tompa. Yeah. Uh, Tompa made the first, um, well, the first relevant, rather, task in 2011. Yeah. And then I co authored a task with him back in 2016. Um, and pretty much right after that, there was a bunch of stuff found, which was really uh, unfortunate. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was outdated pretty much six months after we spent two years making it, but you know. Uh, Tasters out there can, oops, can empathize. Yeah, not, not, not to diminish the task very much, but 
<laughs> uh, speaking of Taz, just watch the Four Swords Adventures Taz. Oh my. That's that... not relevant to anything we're talking about right now, but well, I just want to say it. That's I mean, like... to, to be fair, Four Swords Adventures is in the same continuity as Minish Cap. That's true. fair. That's fair. So, by, by, in that respect, it's relevant. <laughs> yeah. uh, they so both tanked in sales? <laughs> Contrary to what a lot of people think, this game came out after Four Swords Adventures. That's true. Yeah. A lot of people yeah, seem to it, think it, this it, game it, came first. It, it, it is a prequel, but it was released afterwards. Mm -hmm. Zelda Timeline. Oh, Dan is so mad at me for bringing up the Zelda Timeline. <laughs> I, shout out to Dan. Yeah. He doesn't run this game either, but yeah. he's friends with Toad's Root too, so he's sick. Yeah, so right around the 10 minute mark, uh, we are going to be entering our first dungeon, Deep Wood Shrine. <laughs> I promise we're not just going to oh. be making jokes this whole time. We will talk about the game. I don't yeah, promise that. It's, it's, there's, there's not a lot to talk about this early in the run, is the thing. Most of the uh, most of the interesting pieces come much later on when we have a uh, much larger set of items than we do now. Yeah. This is Deepwood Shrine. Yes, yeah, so this series basically has the tutorial dungeon of the game. Um, one thing that uh, the game will throw at you a lot here is Ezlo triggers. So. You'll walk into a space and then Ezlo talks to you and tells you how to like open a door, yeah, for example. One, one thing to note, if you roll into an Ezlo trigger, it actually wastes um, a slightly more time than it would if you just walk into the trigger. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll just be walking into them, basically, yeah. is what we're getting at. All right. Uh, I think we have time for a few donations. Yep. Just stepping on switches right now. Sounds good to me. We have $250 from Strawberry Mog. Says good day to all of you from Australia. Wishing all the best for the runners going fast for a good cause. And a special thank you to 30, uh, well, Will Boy for $30. Says this is my first donation to SGDQ. Minish Cap was one of my most favorite games playing on the Game Boy Advance growing up, and now seeing it obliterated. Good luck on your run, Quo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and we have. Go for it. All right. Uh, we got ourselves just an anonymous $200 donation. Uh, no comment, but thank you so much for your generosity. Yeah, so we stepped on switches to light up torches, and then that, uh, that burned uh, webs. Fun fact, if you actually have the lantern, and you light those torches with the lantern, the webs don't actually burn. It just... The lanterns light up, the webs don't burn. We don't expect to get the lantern until, you know, about two-thirds of the way through the run, so... Yeah. Probably why they did not expect that to happen. A little tidbit. Also by, um... Oh, okay, never mind, I messed it up. Next time we pull statues, I'll mention something. That, though, um, if you manage to turn and press R on the same frame that you would open a chest, you actually roll instead. It's frame perfect, so I'm that good, but in this case it was slower. <laughs> There is such a, being, uh, such a thing as being too fast in this game. I'm too perfect. I'm so frame perfect, it's just, it's slow. It's hey, terrible. We're, we're, we're just barreling through things too quickly. Yeah. Welcome to escort culture, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I am a worldwide phenomenon, believe me. Phenomenon. Oops. That was intended. Uh, so something you'll see in this first dungeon that's kind of exemplary of this whole game, this game as a whole, is uh, enemy RNG. A lot of this game is, uh, not that I would know since I don't run it, but uh, um, reacting to enemy RNG and uh, trying to move and move around them as fast as possible. Yeah. So thankfully the rolling glitch that VB found gives us invincibility frames. Yeah. Uh, if, if you haven't noticed, um, while you're in the rolling state, enemies can't hurt you. So in many cases, you can just roll directly through enemies that are in your path. Only for like the first half of the roll, though. So yeah. you can uh, you can get bonked after. Yeah. I'll just grab this. I don't expect to die here, but yeah, I'd rather not. There's a, a, a few of the pots you see have consistent item drops. Um, most runners tend to know where pots with hearts are, for example. So that's why Ko is going out of his way to grab one of those. Fast. <laughs> nice. That's fast. All right. Here's our first mini boss. So this is Matter Pillar. Um, assuming you do everything right, it should be a two cycle. And as far as this goes, it looks like it'll be a two cycle. Once I once I get to him, there we go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's not two. Oh, <laughs> a little two cycle. All right. All right. Yeah, our 
first item is the gust jar. Uh, the main use of the gust jar here is to get these webs off of doors. Um, as you'll see in a little bit, it can also be used to uh, push Link around when he's standing on a lily pad, which is most of the second half of this dungeon. Yeah. Um, yeah, something I didn't mention earlier. So one uh, drawback of Wii U is that the controller has really, really bad um, snapback. So sometimes you'll flick in a direction, and then it'll give you an input in the other direction, and then you're slashing in the wrong direction, and then you're sad because you don't kill the matter pillar. Didn't happen, but... Well, in this case, it worked out. Exactly. If I was less brain perfect, it wouldn't have, but, you know. We're just that good. That was intended because now the positioning for the, the lily pad is better. Yeah, this this is this is tremendous <laughs> in the case, to say the least. Oh my. Oh my. Case okay. in point. We're good. You're We're so good. sick. Thanks. <laughs> Hashtag flawless. It's actually a good thing I got that hurt earlier. I would have gotten one after Matter Pillar anyways, but... Uh, yeah. We're fine. We're fine. Uh, I messed that up. I'm not sweating. <laughs> have, have you tried not... Yeah. Have you tried not getting hurt so much? <laughs> I have considered it. Oh yeah, there's a thing here that used to be random, but now we know it. Sometimes that pot despawns, yeah. but if you stand on the top half of the lily pad, I believe, it never happens. Yeah. Uh, it always happens if you stand on yeah, the top. Oh, never mind, I had it backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. It, it used to be a very big mystery as to why that would happen on occasion. It would, it would uh, occasionally end runs. Um, now we know why it happens. I think it happened in Atroz's yeah, AGDU. Yeah, in 2015. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I've only, I, in the days when I was actively running this, I only ever had it happen to me once. Same, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty rare, though, so... We're good. Alright, I'm being bullied in my favorite game, so... <laughs> we're gonna pick up hearts before the boss... Nah, no, we'll pick up hearts after the boss, we're fine. Okay. Yeah. I won't regret that. Yeah. Uh, as you might imagine, we are coming up on the first boss of the game. Just one more room to go through, and then we're there. Unfortunately, we do have a nice long introductory cutscene to explain the uh, finer points, if you will. Yeah. So this is arguably the cutest boss of the game. Yes. Don't at me. You, you've, see, you've seen a few of these chews. Um, we are minish size right now, so how big do you think this is going to be? <laughs> It'll be pretty big. Yeah. An absolute unit. Our first boss is just a normal enemy, but we're tiny, so it's huge. <laughs> Yeah, so the strat is just Gustar on the bottom, yeah. and then slash your sword a few times. Yeah. Um, this boss actually has a really interesting mechanic that uh, you only need to hit him a certain number of times, but the amount of time he stays down is random. Yeah. So we actually want him to be down for the least amount of time possible. Which I believe is... Five. Yeah. It's anywhere between five and nine hits per phase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. six. Oh, I counted seven. Oh, was it? I yeah, counted maybe. seven, too. Okay. But I don't run this game, so... Hmm, hello. Hello? All right, we're fine. All right, one cool mechanic, too, is if I slash my sword on him, as long as the boss is getting hit, you won't get hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ugh. <laughs> it's okay, that bounces out for yeah. how good I'm going to be later yeah. in the run. It, it only makes a difference of about a second either way. Oh, okay. Okay. One extra jump, that's fine. And then the last cycle is always consistent. It's not a... Yeah. Three. Yeah. Oh, we're okay. done. Yes. Yeah. We'll go, go for ahead. it. Okay, that was good for trying. Yeah. Uh, we get the Earth Element, which is the first of four. Yep. So we'll, uh... yeah. To explain a little bit what we're intending to do, at the very start of the game, we got the broken uh, Picory Blade. We are looking for the four elements to... Uh, reforge this blade. Well, two. We're actually going to forge the blade before we get all four of the elements. It's just going to enhance the sword to the point where we can actually go and defeat Vati with it. Yeah, there's no master sword in this game. It's the four sword instead, yeah. uh, which is a precursor to four swords yes. and four swords uh, adventures. My, minor spoilers. This is the story of how the Pickery blade becomes the four sword. <laughs> Speaking of, if you guys haven't seen the Four Swords Adventure Toss... <laughs> Watch the Four Swords Adventure Toss <laughs> by Yadro Speedruns. Uh, I should probably pl plug my own task, but yeah. that one's a lot more impressive. <laughs> not gonna lie. It's a good time. 
Okay, in a moment here, we're going to be getting bombs. Uh, yeah, so bombs are really sick. So I found rolling, and while I was doing the uh, intense studying of finding rolling, I found a unique property of rolling called roll lifting. Um, and basically what that is, is there's one frame where, when you're rolling, where if you drop a bomb, it shortens the bomb's fuse. So uh, Quo didn't do one there, but there's going to be a few in the run where um, Quo's going to be attempting a roll lift, which is, like I mentioned, just the technique to shorten the bomb's fuse so it explodes faster. Yeah, there, there's a lot of points during the run when we're basically waiting for a bomb to explode. So if you can shorten how long the bomb takes to explode, you save a few frames here and there. Yeah, you'll notice it's a roll lift if the bomb sort of like jumps up and down on the ground. Yeah. Um, by the way, I did not find roll lifting. I did find rolling, though. I will take that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just roll with it. S front culture. All right, we just activated a ring wind crest. Remember that for later. It's going to be really important. It's on the quiz. All right. We're about to see one of the what was presented as one of the core mechanics of the game, which is called Kinstone Fusion. Um, this is slightly more prominent in this run than it used to be. We're not going to see Kinstone Fusion, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> that's, no that's normally when Kinstone Fusion is introduced to you. Yeah. Fortunately, you can just save and quit at that point in time, and you skip the introductory cutscene. But once it comes up again, I'll explain what it is. Just remember that part, too. It's really important for later. Yeah. Okay. Play your notepads. So we are now getting the spin attack. The reason we're getting it right now is because we can't get to the next part of the game until we get the spin attack. Actually, there There's was a new skiff yeah. found by Solidified Gaming, Craig Aslan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's my boy, yeah. by the way. Uh, do I show it off? Do we do it? Uh, <laughs> guys, do we do it? do it? Vote now. <laughs> Vote now. Press one if Quo should do it. <laughs> All right, we're doing it. Yeah. Oh, no. That's it, we got Yo, it. Yo, yeah. what a god. Normally that guard doesn't let you pass until you get the spin attack. As it, yeah. As it happens, we still need the spin attack because it's, uh, it will become an, a part of an important mechanic later on in the game. We're not quite there yet, but... Yeah, so that skip's actually slower because we need to do it twice. Uh, I'll, I'll just spin attack the next time. <laughs> also, there was a rule up there. I don't know if you guys noticed oh, the bomb yeah. jumping. Yeah. BB, you could have capitalized. <laughs> Tompa found roll lifting, by the way. I also forgot to get water. Whoops. It's okay. It's okay. We've got water right here. Uh, this is Mount Cornell. I personally tend to call it Mount Doom because, uh, in my experience, it ends runs frequently. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Uh, our, the next dungeon is at the top of this mountain. Uh, if you fall down, you tend to waste a lot of time trying to get back to where you were. All right. So that was the three rupees that uh, yeah. we didn't get earlier that now we have. And that'll be important for later. There's one frame here that I can roll without taking damage. I didn't get it. All right. Yeah. That's fine. I always go for that, but I never get it. It's rough. All right. So we're going to get green water here. Um, there's not much going on other than climbing the mountain for a while. So if we have donations, now's a good time. That's perfect, Quo, because uh, Fred175 has sent us $1,234.56. And 56 cents. One, two, three, four. I see what you did there. He says, can't watch you here, but hope you're great VODs. Once again, Wi Fi again. Good luck this year. All right, so this green water is really important to not pour out. If you do, you'll be feeling blue. Yeah, that. That, this spot is the only place you can get this. We need it at a certain point shortly in order to continue climbing the mountain. If we lose it, uh, we need to go back for it. It's very detrimental to the run. No one would ever dream of doing that in a run, actually. No, never. It's, no. it's, it's never happened before. What are you it's, talking about? It's never happened before. Anyways, the risky part is to save time. We actually have to equip it here. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I've never done it before, but now's a good time, actually. You know, sort of never happened before in a run. Marathon luck. Yeah. Fortunately, it's not too long before we need it. Yeah, I mentioned there's a few other things that Ezlo does that are important. This is one of them. True. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that part's normally where people pour it out because they think there's an Ezlo trigger, but there isn't. Yeah. It's a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Alright, keep in mind that Minish Blade cannot push pots, but we can still pick up the bean. That we did not roll lift this time. It, it, it is possible to roll lift this plant. If you do, it, it, it is destroyed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it won't, it won't be destroyed. It, it just. Uh, okay. I'm thinking of something else. Um. I can't think of it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Pots I don't. break when you roll lift them. Oh, yeah. Isn't there a strat? Uh, there's a strat, but no one can do it because <laughs> you can do it, I believe. <laughs> Not only do you need to be frame perfect, but also pixel perfect. And I don't know the lineup. Yeah. If I knew the lineup, I could obviously do it. But, um. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you will notice uh, Quo has 40 rupees at this point in time. We're coming up on the point soon ish when we will actually need 40 rupees to get an item. Yeah. So, there's a little skip there for those, uh, for those that missed it. Um, you can actually get the mushroom from the bottom layer. Uh, and the reason why is it's actually not the bottom layer, it's just an illusion of sorts. That's actually one of the oldest tricks in the game. Yeah. It was, uh, it was in the first run in 2005. Yeah, normally you're expected to go into the cave there and go all the way around and up to that level in order to grab the mushroom. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, we are about to get the grip ring, which costs, conveniently enough, 40 rupees. We, like we planned it. Yeah, we need the grip ring to continue climbing the mountain, and that's pretty much the only thing it's used for. Uh, yeah, a, pretty much. Yeah, I think I think at this point this might, that might be one of the only things left that we actually need to climb in this run. Yes, or that like not ladders and stuff, but you don't need the grip ring for that. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Wow. One grip ring Uh, Toads, <laughs> where are you at? <laughs> These rocks do half a heart of damage, so ideally we don't want to get hit by any of them. Yeah. Yeah, this wall is basically the reason why a lot of runs end here, just because yeah. you just take a massive amount it's, of it's, damage. It's very, it's very random. Never Half lucky. Hard. Well, you're not, you're not, oh, well, you're, you're still in relatively good shape. Yeah, we're, we're fine. It is not uncommon to reach this point and have half a heart of health left. I need to do basically everything up to the start of the next dungeon without taking a hit. It's not pleasant. Um, All right. So here, uh, Ezlo says that there are raindrops that do basically the damage of boulders. They don't. They only do a quarter heart of damage. I wasn't going to read this up, but that's like Martin's favorite fact, and it's his birthday Friday. <laughs> so wish Martin a happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while you're pushing boulders, can I talk about Fire Rod? Because I love Fire Rod. Oh, go for it. I love Fire Rod, too. Okay. So there's a theoretical thing in this game called the Fire Rod. If you've played this game, which I haven't, but, yeah. you know, that's irrelevant. Yeah, basically, um, the Fire Rod was intended to be an item from the game, but um, it was ne they never finished implementing it, so... So what it does is it copies tiles. So you press the button, and it copies the tile in front of you, and then you press it again, and it... Places, places that tile, and it's super broken. Yeah. Like, you can just go anywhere with it. Yeah. So there's a meme category called Fire Rod Percent, where you literally cheat and start with the Fire Rod yeah. item. As far as we know, there is no legitimate way to obtain the half-implemented Fire Rod. You need to enter in a cheat in order to get the item to begin with. Yeah. Uh, specifically for those who like nerding out, um, the cell, uh, rather the Fire Rod is the debug item cell over it set. So if you know what that means, good job. <laughs> I didn't until I looked it up. <laughs> All right, we can get a swag kill here. I missed it. Ah! Uh, if you time, if you position yourself exactly right, you can kill the enemy that's right next to the mushroom. All right, we're. Airing on the end of the dungeon. There's one more block pushing puzzle. Well, so. the end of the climb, the start of the dungeon. Yeah, yes. This is a dungeon itself, let's face it. I, I can't disagree with that. <laughs> the final boss is a rock pushing puzzle again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love rocks so yeah. much. Same. <laughs> this is just exhilarating gameplay. We're, we're, we're really rocking it here. Thank you, thank you. You're we fine. made it, we made it. Okay. I'll be here all night. <laughs> all right, for those of you who haven't fallen asleep, we're getting on the second dungeon now. Yeah, we have a short additional bit of navigation. We're going to turn in the Pickery Blade. By the time we're done the dungeon, they're going to finish uh, forging an actual sword out of it again. Conveniently. Yeah, Miku's not doing so good. Let's, uh... Oh, Miku. Yeah. Squeeze Did I just break that? No. No, we're it's, good. It's, it's good. It's okay. good. <laughs> you know what? She's going my close. We're not breaking the real expensive equipment, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. Let's just... 
All right, so we give the sword to the mayor, and he's going to help us fix it. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do this. Um, there is uh, one of the Minish who will not let you through until you hand in the blade. Yeah. Um, this guy. Interestingly enough, if you do fire raw, you can actually skip this part, and you come back, and the sword's already forged, no. which is interesting. Clearly, they stole it from you on the way through. Yeah, pretty much. All right. Here is the second dungeon, Cave of Flames. Oh, no. I needed that bomb. Don't hurt me. We're good. I actually didn't need that bomb. I got a bomb drop earlier. Yeah. Uh, we need this and this. Reminder to always put your sword on B. It's really important. Yes. It is, it is a vital part of the run. <laughs> Oops. All right, I'll take that. Uh, so there are some enemies, this one specifically, um, that you can slash twice to kill them. We'll just take this for now. Um, or sometimes you can just slash your sword and then poke them with your sword uh, sticking out as if you're charging a spin attack. Uh, so there's a few times where that's actually a little faster. And also it looks cool. So we'll be using that uh, intermittently. Uh, the main gimmick with this dungeon is minecarts. Minecarts, uh, in this game, they're faster as opposed to the Oracle games. As you'll see in a moment. <laughs> Love that. What a ride. What a ride. Uh, I'm being bullied. No. He escaped. All right. That's important for later. Yeah. Okay, this room can go pretty poorly or pretty well. Uh, if we had two helmet stars, that's actually pretty nice. Oh, this guy's confused. Okay, that was not terrible. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. It's acceptable. As it was say. flawless. I don't know what it's talking about. It was flawless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, maybe Miku's going hatless, too. No. <laughs> this isn't going well. What even is the point of finishing this run now? <laughs> All right, so the whole point of the first half of the dungeon is just to get a, um, a small key so we can unlock the second half. There's actually a strat here. No one else goes for it except me and the task, so it's task only. So that is it. <laughs> I'm basically task. Yeah, frame perfect. Yeah. You can also roll on these, which is nice. It scares a few people sometimes. One nice thing about this game is sword slashing, you can cancel with another sword slash. So you can just match really fast. I don't think we uh, mentioned that earlier. Mm. All right. And we're coming up on the small key, so. Interestingly enough, um, I don't think there's any points when we especially see this during any percent, but slashing your sword in, in certain areas can uh, manipulate the RNG of the game. This is most yeah. famously used when collecting figurines. <laughs> uh, fortunately, we, we don't have to do that in any percent. There's, there's one place, but it's, it's really easy. Yeah. And we have our key. All right, we're just going to travel back. Uh, now's a good time if we have a few donations. Yes. And donations I have. Mike Ski 194 sends us $50. What's up, Mike? He says, hey, Quo. So happy to see Minish Cap back at GDQ again. Good luck on the run from everyone in the Minish Cap community. Looking forward to seeing you beat the mayor later. We'll get that mayor. <laughs> uh, Atru has a question about the game mechanics in this donation, but it's a $25 donation. He says, wait, dodge rolling in the Minish Cap makes you immune to damage? I didn't know Zelda was a Souls-like. <laughs> it is. Congratulations, we have the Dark Souls of Zelda games. <laughs> right here. All right, so there's a quick kill you can do oh, here. Um, I messed it up. Yeah. You know what, that was still fine. Yeah, yeah. that's close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Flawless. Yeah. Flawless, actually. Yeah, with very good positioning, you can kill all of them basically at once. We now have the cane of Pachi. Pukai. I don't know. I pronounce it the Italian way. Whatever. Um, we use this cane to flip items, which, as it happens, includes Link himself. Uh, you're going to see it. Yeah. Mine card is now the right way up. That is the main use of it. Just flip items like this. It's but pretty I, much. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, the most notable other use of those cards is if you use it on a pit like this, uh, you will use it to launch Link up to the next level. Yeah. We'll see that a few times. Yeah. Not 
too often, but, well, fairly frequently throughout the rest of this dungeon specifically, but only sporadically throughout the rest of the run. Yeah. This game does have a bad habit of sort of forgetting items after you exit the dungeon. Yeah. Like, bombs you use, like, everywhere on Mount Crandall and in this dungeon, and then you just stop using them. So if you're good, you can skip three of these. I didn't, I'm not good. I'm sorry. It's okay. I got it in practice, though. Take my word for it. <laughs> All right, so we can actually damage boost past these guys to save a bit of time. Uh, we're pretty okay on health, but I'll still be a bit careful because there is a room coming up that is uh, not super friendly, which is this one, for multiple reasons. Exhibit A. Uh, back to thrilling gameplay. All right, we're good. I don't think there's a heck of a lot more interesting going on throughout most of the rest of this dungeon. Uh, we get two treasure chests, but no, nah, for the most part, we get tin stones, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, now's a good time for donations yeah. if we have them. Sounds great, Mr. Quo. I got Anthony28 sending us $25. He says, I was going to make a Zelda joke, but I don't want to diminish the importance of GDQ. Pun hype! Good luck, Quo. Pretty sure I used that one earlier, but let's go with Ooh. it. Ooh, Ooh. you're getting called, called out. out. Sushi Elemental, with his $20 donation, says the lean, green, mean machine of Link of Hyrule is the Minish Cop. Nintendo, get on that one. Thanks. Oh, so there's a thing here. You can kind of skip a cycle yeah. if you uh, carefully walk across these platforms like that. And carefully, we did. Very carefully. Very. I think you can continue on. <laughs> Got more donations, now's a good time. Alrighty, not a problem. Andro Fluff sends us $200. Says, had to donate to Quo, seeing that he's playing one of my favorite handheld Zelda games. Good luck, Quo. May the one be blessed with good RNG. Admiral Fluff is not his full name, dude. <laughs> I think you cut out a second part of it. <laughs> Thank you to Zed and the Oasis for $25. Says, sorry I didn't donate earlier, but I just found the link. Tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? All right, here, here's, a, here's a heartfelt one. Uh, Rogue One LA with his $20 donation says, long time watcher, first time donator. I had to make my first ever donation during the Legend of Zelda game. I didn't get into the LOZ series until my 20s, but I don't intend to make the same mistake with my son when I introduce him to Link's Awakening for Switch later this year. Thank you, GDQ and Docs Without Borders. Best of luck to the runner. We are going to go most of the way around this room um, for once. <laughs> uh, in more historic runs of this game, before we needed the kinstones for things, um, it's, as you can see there, you don't need to hit every single tornado in order to get where we need to go in this room. And we have the boss key. Uh, the boss door is right here, so we are going to find our next boss. Yeah. So that cycle is actually pretty rough to make, but uh, flawless. Just like <laughs> hashtag flawless. Hashtag flawless. Yeah. Did you know? Don't. Don't. Okay. <laughs> They'll never know. They'll never They'll know. know. They'll never know. <laughs> They'll never know. Uh, so this is Glee Rock. No, uh, theoretically, no relation to Glee Ox, the more famous boss from the original Zelda game. Uh, we are going to use the cane to remove its shell and hit it uh, exactly eight times per cycle. <laughs> okay, you can say it. Okay, did you know that there are Glee Ox on the wall? It's a fun fact about this game that not many people know. <laughs> so there's this space right there. <laughs> and right there. Yeah. All right, round two. No. Yeah. No. We're good. For every phase but the first, you need to wait for a little bit for the shell to cool down enough uh, to use the cane on it. Yeah. And also, making him point um, forward, or up rather, is slightly faster than left, right, or down. Yeah. So you just manipulate yeah, him. The animation for his head falling down is slightly faster if he's facing upwards. <laughs> <laughs> B 
get him, Quo. <laughs> I have very few joys in life, but that is one of them. Ooh, that was actually a nice boss, actually. I think I got all first prize. Cool. Yeah. That was Gleok. Lee Rock. Lee Rock. No relation with Gleok. Right, so we are, as you might imagine from the Cave of Flames, about to get the fire element, the second of four. <laughs> We're halfway through the game. <laughs> We're halfway through the game, guys. <laughs> yeah. Praise the sun. <laughs> sure. Praise the fire element. <laughs> So now we'll go play the Minish Smith a visit, and he'll have a sword for us. He'll tell us to take the sword to uh, an interesting place. Yeah, you can actually skip this part. Um, you'll go down the mountain and have a joyous time getting to the special place, and then realize you forgot the sword. You have to climb back up. It's not a fun time. But we did not do that this run. Fortunately for us, it's a lot faster to go down a mountain than it is to climb up a mountain. Yes. Very thankfully. Yeah. yeah, there's not much that goes on. We're just going back to the castle. Uh, now's another good time for donations yeah. if we can have, have a few. Perfect. Melted Clockwork sends us $15. It says, when I was a kid, I faked being sick so I could finish playing Minish Cap. But now as an adult, I've taken off the entire week of work so I can watch all these amazing speedruns. Glad to see my interest can now support a good cause. Cool. Rather than me trying to find the last Kinstone Fusion. <laughs> a very simple message from Gelden with his $20 donation. He says, go and go. Yeah, we are activating another wind quest. Keep that in mind. This is important later. It's on the quiz. It is on the quiz. I can't believe I'm going to fail the quiz, dude. <laughs> I'm on the couch. Oh, my God. Third GDQ in a row. That's why you're back. <laughs> I keep flunking TMP. <laughs> right, so as you might imagine, we're back at the castle. Our special place actually happens to be in the castle basement. <laughs> this door was apparently not here before. Also, no one else can see it. If you do go there earlier in the game than this, that door is not there. As many people who have forgotten to get the sword can attest to. I can confirm, I have a source. Who shall remain in? Yeah. All right. I'm the source. Yeah. Okay, we got it. All right. <laughs> okay, we are about to be introduced to one of the core mechanics of this game. Yeah. And, you know, just, we're at, just at the halfway point of the game is when we introduce this. Past the halfway point, really. All right, uh, so this mechanic is, wow, splitting. I should know this. Um, basically, there are some glowing tiles pretty much throughout Hyrule. Uh, and Link can make clones on them, so he can make one copy for every element that he gets, other than the first one. Yeah, so we have two elements now, so as you'll see in a second, uh, do a spin attack, charge up the blade, touch two pads. Suddenly, there are two links. And that's going to be used for fights and puzzles and a bunch of stuff. Yep. Uh, funny story, with the skip earlier, with the, uh, you can actually skip the spin attack. If you get here, you can't finish the game. You can't save warp out. You're just stuck. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. Which reminds me, I will need to do that skip again. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just spin attack. True. Yeah. Or you could do the skip again. <laughs> or <laughs> or <I> could... <laughs> Uh, the next time we'll see, the next time we see splitting, which is going to be fairly soon, um, I'll explain a few more mechanics about uh, how that's uh, how that works. The clones have some interesting properties. But Nothing. before then, our old friend Vadi is here to pay us a visit. <laughs> Fun fact: the only time you see him walk is in the opening cutscene. Every other time, he just teleports. Yeah, or Moon walks away. <laughs> All right, so this is the double mobile fight. It's pretty yeah. hard. Uh, hopefully, I don't mess it up. That was good. Okay. All right, so I have a special quote to read. Uh, this is from Atroz in 2013. Uh, this has to do with a sign later on. Uh, he said, 
Somebody's gonna do that. It's just one of those things that's eventually gonna happen. Like, I'm always expecting it to happen. And I always wanna see it happen when somebody just like rolls into the sign and eventually just cuts it down. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't happen to me, but I hope it's gonna happen eventually to somebody. Uh, Atraz is also famous for cutting down that sign. Hey, Quo, what happened in your PB? <laughs> I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> Uh, this must be a sign of something to come. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't clap for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so do we do the skip again or no? Yeah? Yeah? I think that's All a right. yes. All right, we'll do it. Wow, what a god. Every time. Easy every, every time. time. Nice job losing, like, five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. All right, so here's the splitting again. Uh, so you can't let the clone get into anything solid or, well, dissipate that. extremely quickly, exactly as you just saw. You can dismiss the clones at any time by pressing the button. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. I don't really get why the clones are in this game. Well, like, <laughs> if, if you think about it, when you get four clones, eventually that's what the four sword does. You right? can pretend you're playing a better Zelda game. <laughs> like, uh, get off the couch. Ouch. My heart. Uh, I'm wounded. Something I didn't uh, say earlier, uh, the carpets of this game are really great. So just look at the shape of them. Just pay attention to that throughout the run. Uh, there's some that like wrap around the castle, which yeah. doesn't yeah. architecturally make sense. Yeah. So what you see here is Vati is, uh, has done something with the king and is now impersonating him. He killed him. him. Yeah. Uh, what that means, as you'll see later on, is we can't easily get back into the castle. <laughs> How did you do that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. Normally, what that sign tells you is that, well, we are trying to get into and across a swamp in order to get to the next dungeon. That the sign, swamp. yeah, the swamp. swamp. <laughs> that sign it tells us that we need a pair of Pegasus boots in order to cross the swamp. Uh, so, in order to know that we need to come here next and be able to get the boots and start the, this particular side quest to get the boots, uh, we need to read that sign first. If you destroy the sign, you need to respawn the <laughs> sign in order to continue the quest. Yeah. How much time does that lose, Quo? Uh, like 10 seconds. It's not that bad. Yeah. But you'll never live it down if you ever do it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> what these Minish are telling us is, this is the shoemaker who normally makes his Pegasus boots. He's fallen asleep. We need to find him um, some... Uh, a mushroom, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's called the Wake Up Mushroom. Yeah. No bonus points if you guess what it does. So we need to find that in order to wake up the Shoemaker, in order to get the Pegasus boots, in order to cross the swamp. This is not the most elaborate that side quest to get before we get to the next dungeon. Fortunately, uh, by the time we finish the next dungeon, we don't need to worry about a lot more of those side quests for reasons which will become clear. So fun fact, you can actually get this kill out early in the game, um, but Malon and Talon don't spawn until basically now. Uh, so you can't actually use it. So we just get it now. Yeah, we would need to go very out of our way earlier in order to get that key any earlier than this. And there's no point in doing so until now, so we just get it. That's the intended time. All right, uh, we're just gonna make our way through uh, Lawn Lawn Ranch, basically. So now's another good time for donations if we have a few. And a few I do quo. Got two hundred fifty dollars from GT Man Fred. It says hi for an early Zelda run. My wife and I are watching live today, but I will be traveling for work the next week, so gotta get our donation in now so we can watch the bots next week. Good luck to all the runners this week. Also, somebody evidently said you love puns a lot. Guy, yes, sends us twenty dollars. Says your Minish Cap speed run to overcome an impossibly short time is Mota Vatiing me to donate. Thank you, guy. Yes. Don't clap for that. That one was okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a stretch. I mean, uh, I mean, thank you for your donation. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Oops. Hello. All right. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is, uh, I believe, 60 rupees. Yeah. And that's all we need for the run, basically. Yeah, that is, if you've been paying attention, that is, I believe, 100 rupees that we spent. 110. 110. Uh, the bottle. 120. It is 120. The ball's 20. Yeah, the box. 40. Yeah, and then 60. Yeah, we can I, I, I promise we can do math. <laughs> no math. <laughs> I've played this game before. What? Yeah. But yeah, we don't need we don't need any more money towards the rest of the run. We happen to have 40 rupees left over, but that's just because the fastest way to get the remaining 60 rupees is to get the 100 rupees in Cape of Flames. Yeah. All right, so we have the mushroom. We can make up the shoesmith. Um, and you can see just how much work left he had to do on the boots before he was done with them. Pay attention. They're done. <laughs> that's that's it. That's yes. Yeah. We couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. The Pegasus boots are the fastest form of movement. However, they do have a bit of a startup time. So for distances greater than about two screen lengths, they are the fastest form of movement. For anything shorter than that, it is rolling. So you'll still see a lot of rolling throughout the rest of the run. Yeah. VB still gets his claim to fame. Yeah. It's also useful for the swamp. Normally, you can't uh, run a, or walk across that rather without drowning. Yeah. So if you are moving normally on top of the swamp, you will slowly sink into it. Uh, you are not intended to be able to get anywhere in the swamp without dashing over it. No. Basically. All right. In a second here. All right, the boots are also useful for fights like this one. Uh, we can just jump over his blade. Oops, and not get hit, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, that was a dark knight. We'll be seeing a few more of those throughout the rest of the run. A lot of them. <laughs> it's like, starting now, it's Minish Cap's favorite enemy. Oops, all right. All right, so our objective in the swamp, I mentioned Tin Stone Fusion earlier. Um, we'll be seeing that for the first time towards the end of the swamp. We're well, right at the end of the swamp, actually, because we need to do that three times in order to get into the next area. Yeah. But before we can do that, we need to get another item first. It's water, guys. That's the item. <laughs> uh, something we haven't mentioned yet is you can save or lose a lot of time in this game from menuing, but Quo's menuing is always frame perfect because he's a god. Hashtag flawless, basically. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was not. Oh, okay. That was Hello? not terrible. That was okay. That yeah. could have gone worse. Yeah. So now we have the bow. Oh no. Oh no. Flawless menuing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This oh. I believe, if I remember correctly, the second save and quit. They get more. Uh, third, I think. Th second or third. They get more common past this point. Yeah. So that was a manipulation for two kinstones. Uh, that was pretty easy, but uh, yeah, we get the last two kinstones that we need for the run. That's a lie. We get one more later. Actually, well, we actually get three more later. I was gonna fail TMC class, dude. I can't <laughs> believe this. <laughs> I'll be back next year, guys. Yeah. yeah. So the main reason we need the bow right now is so that we can shoot I shoot these statues. Um, right here is the first of the three special. Well, this is the second actually. Yeah. We got the first one for the dark nut. This is the second. Yeah, so statues stop becoming solid when you attack them. So uh, it's a useful mechanic with the paired with rollings. We can just roll through them, which yep. is nice. We just got to wake them up. Yeah. Notably, if you don't hold in any directions as you're dashing along one of these diagonals, uh, you will just continue to dash at full speed. If you are holding a direction as you do that, then you slow down. Yeah. Yeah, diagonals are really weird in this game with the boots. You'll notice we're passing by a wind crest. We don't need to come back here at any point. Yeah, the only wind crests we've opened are, or that we need to open are they're already open. So, yeah, hundred percent does, but that's because it's a good category. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. Figurines. <laughs> Figurines. Uh, here's the third and last skin stone. This is also the closest to the exit of the area, which is why we're getting it last. We just need to dash once more, and then we'll be at the point where we need to use this. So, kinstone fusion. Oh, right. no. That's not it. Good try. This is it. Yeah. Thanks. So, you need stones of specific shapes to match with other stones to trigger various effects. In this case, we are uh, doing all three of these fusions. We'll get that rock to shatter, and we can go into the next area. There, um, the ones that are not gold-colored um, are green, which are the most common, blue, which are uh, middle rarity, and red, which are relatively rare. Yeah. Um, 
We manipulate things specifically to get a few kinstones with specific shapes to trigger important effects later on. It used to be that other than those three, there was only one more that we needed to deal. However, most of the rest of them are what we need in order to get the magical boomerang. So now we get a few more in. Yeah, specifically the gold color ones are for like story quests, so that's one of them. And yep. then the other one's to like open, uh, not the grave. You get it from the grave to open like Veil Falls for yep. later, stuff like that. Well, we're, not, tops we're not actually doing that in this run, but uh, yeah. that is, I think that's the only other gold colored kinstone in the run. Uh, the Cloud Tops. Yes. After that, it's it though. Oh, missed one. Hello. I never remember the one in Cloud Tops because they don't, we don't go there in any percent, <laughs> which is very unfortunate because it also has the best music in the game. Ooh, debatable. The, uh, I, I, the I, 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 music. I say it's the best music in the game. Mm, mm. The real Crypt has really good music. It's like it's top two at least. So uh, you cut down the grass there because small Link can't yeah. go through the grass. Have you ever seen a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Yeah. You know what happens if you go through the grass while you're small? Yeah. So... As you may have noticed a couple of times, we need to be Minish Link uh, in order to activate these Armo statues. Um, we can't get through them if they're not active. We can't wake them up in order to get through them if they're not active. Yeah. Here we're going to see exactly the opposite thing. We're going to turn this one off. If we, try, if we approach it and it's still on, then it will block the passage to the bottom. There's actually a theoretical way to get past this guy without doing that, but it puts you in a glitch state where you can't progress any further. Don't ask how I know that. Um, <laughs> not important. That's with VB. Yeah. We do need to defeat all the enemies here in order to clear these statues out and get into the next screen, which is the last screen before the next dungeon. So, uh, this dungeon is kind of where the major glitches start, where the run takes a serious turning point from being pretty much glitchless yeah. to being a glitch fest. Yes. Apart so, from rolling, obviously. Yeah, so this dungeon is the Fortress of Winds. Uh, the dungeon item of this is the Molmets. Uh, we are going to use them a little bit in, uh, in shall we say, unintended ways. But uh, we, need to get a, we need to get the myths first before we can do that, so... I'm doing loom strats, by the way. I was supposed to learn something. Uh, well, two strats in this dungeon. But then uh, we found another strat, so I practiced that one instead. Yeah. You'll notice that we're not spaced quite right in order to hit those two switches. It doesn't matter. The switch stays pressed for a moment after you step off of it. So as it happens, you can use the wrong pads and still be able to hit those switches. It stays pressed for exactly one frame, but that's all we need. Because, again, we're frame perfect. Yeah. Here we are turning on another statue solely so that we can pull that lever. Remember, this room will be back here later. <laughs> it's on the quiz. So there's actually uh, two keys in the first section of the dungeon, and then later in the dungeon there's a forking yeah. path with two locked doors. Yeah, as it happens, we only need one of the two keys. Uh, and this one is like, well, not only is this one slightly faster to get, we also need to be back in the room we were just in a little bit later. Unfortunately, the other key's cooler, but uh, there's a really cool fight in that room. Yeah. Or in one of the rooms, rather, but we don't get that. Uh, we're just gonna grab a heart or two, just in case. We do want, well, there is a trick later on that involves us taking damage. Um, so ideally we want to have, uh, it, it, a sufficiently skilled runner will not mess this up particularly often, but it does take a little bit of damage each time. Something we haven't mentioned yet is you can cancel the, uh, yeah. Uh, bow animation. Yeah, normally, there's, normally there's a bit longer of a, a bow animation after you use the bow. If you tap the Pegasus boots, um, you actually cancel that animation. Nice fight. Good fight. Nice. All right, we are about to get the moments and things are about to take a turn for the especially interesting. Here they are. Yeah, save and quit. The intended use of this item is to be able to dig through dirt. Uh, you've probably seen a few rooms now in which there is dirt. We do need to do this a little bit at various points during the run. The first instance of that is actually coming up right away. We also need it for the boss, but that's, yeah. uh, I guess, technically important. Yeah. That was it, guys. That's all there is to it. Yeah. 
Uh, we need that too. Yeah, that is the red kinstone that we got in earlier versions of the design. It's very important. And now we are going back to the room that we were in before. What you're about to see uh, is based off of a glitch called Portal Items. Uh, I will refrain from saying any more until you see this in action. It involves a portal and items. We used our creative brains to come up with that one. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. I saw there was a combination of a couple of different things. We're at the boss now. Um, pushing up against a portal, if you are using an item as you jump onto a portal, you will use the item on top of the portal. In the case of the Molmus, it will actually shift your position slightly up. Um, in combination with the damage boost you get from a bomb, you can actually be placed onto a layer directly above you. Yeah, I believe it's a five frame window for the damage boost, so yep. not trivial at all. And we're talking like five real frames, not like when Ocarina of Time Runners say five oh, frames. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know that FSA runs at 120 frames? Does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> there are four links, though. It's like 60 frames for four links. Yeah. Basically. Or 30 frames, rather, four links. Yeah. So well, while we've been describing that, folks, we've been fighting the boss, the base premise of this is simple. Um, use the bow to shoot the eyes and the hands. Uh, to disable the hands. Once both hands are disabled, you can shrink and go into the head. Inside the head, uh, you will see one of the six pillars, and it's never the same pillar twice in a row, um, will be active, and you need to hit it a few times in order to move on to the next phase. On the second and third phases, you need to dig through this. As it happens, you don't need to be right next to the pillar in order to see that it's the one you need to hit. There's a the little blue glowing aura that you may have seen. You can be a tile away from it and still be in range to hit it. Yeah. All right, there's a strat for this uh, for this last cycle. I'm not allowed to say the name of it on stream. <laughs> uh, this and this. Oof, flawless. All right. If the players are in the front three, uh, it's a lot more optimal. But again, it's block based so there's nothing we can really do yeah. about it but, but that was it if you notice on the floor there's Mazal yeah yeah Mazal is the name of the boss so you were expecting an element perhaps the wind element um, as it happens the people who had the well an element aren't at home anymore so instead we get the most important item in the run the ocarina Harder, guys. Yeah. Um, the intended use of the ocarina is to allow us to travel to any wind crest we've unlocked. We do use it a few times for that purpose. However, um, the more important use of it is uh, creatively named the ocarina glitch, which will allow us to do some very interesting things. But in the meantime, um, we are going to do a few more kinstone fusions, which will set up the quest and complete the quest that we need in order to get the magical boomerang. Tingles made it into the wrong guys. <laughs> no. If you don't talk to Tingle again there, uh, you do not trigger the rest of the quest. And it's a bad time. Yeah. Happened in practice a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, this is simple. Um, we just need to talk to Tingle's three brothers and do kinstone fusions with them. Once we've done all of that, we have the way open to the magical boomerang. It probably won't be immediately clear why we're getting the boomerang, but... <laughs> Good try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we need to manipulate June here for the sole purpose of having her... Am I not doing something right? <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> I have never seen that happen before. There we go. All right, we made it, guys. Now we need to do the frame-perfect trick. Yeah. Which we got first try. This is the Ocarina glitch. Uh, if you play the Ocarina on the same frame that you're attempting to transition to another screen, uh, this is, I believe, exclusively done with doorways. Um, you enter this interesting state where you no longer have collision detection and can basically walk across anything on the screen. Yeah, there's a few other uh, peculiarities of the Ocarina glitch, but we will be seeing it uh, 
a few times throughout the run, so we'll explain them there. Yeah. Oh, wait. So what, what we are triggering here... Um, uh, yeah, so that's uh, Minish just make sure that this girl's out of the way, so for yeah. some reason they thought that was important. Uh, but it basically just explains what or how to get the power bracelets, which is yep. the next quest. Got the cat boost. Oh no. Oh no. Reverse cat boost. Yeah. <laughs> Reverse cat boost. <laughs> All intentional, by the way. Yeah. That's nice. And you probably remember these slugs from Deepwood Shrine. As well as these enemies from Deepwood Shrine. We're grabbing the fairy here. Just in case. Foreshadowing the head. Alright, that was okay. Okay, we have now have the power braces. The power braces allow you to push pots as 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 a, as a minish size. That's, um, that's all we need them for. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so the power bracelets, we can technically skip them, um, but it involves a frame perfect trick later in the run that you'll have one shot at and there's no setup for it. Yeah. And if you miss it, you lose yeah. pretty much the amount right. of time that skipping the power yeah. bracelet saves. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is the most important Kingstone fusion in the run. Uh, this has existed for as long as we've known that this is the thing. It predates the ones that we need in order to get the magical to break. This yeah. opens a portal to. You don't know this at the time that you normally do this portal, but it actually opens a portal to a much later area of the game, which you're not supposed to have access to at this point. This will let, later on in the run let us skip basically directly to the second to last dungeon. We have a bit more to go through before we actually make use of that. Just remember it for later. It's very important. It'll be on the quiz. It will be on the quiz. Uh, so the, the next like few minutes is just us fusing with Tingle. So if you want to go ahead and donations, there's uh, there's not much else going on. <laughs> it's not a thrilling side quest. Fantastic. We got some encouragement from Yesi Chan with a fifty dollar donation. They say you're on a roll. <laughs> and, and we have an anonymous two hundred and fifty dollar donation. No comment. But again, thank you so much for your generosity. A fellow runner of this game, SMW Dreams, sends us twenty dollars. Says, I'm here from the TMC Discord. Is your friendly reminder to Quo that he needs to dab during his run? <laughs> we will all be sad. Do not worry, I got you. DBX, I'm still counting on you, by the way. <laughs> I believe. White Caps 413 with a $25 donation says, Zelda is the best game, se game series. I'd hate to put a cap on my fandom, for I'd fear diminishing returns. I believe that's the third time we've made that particular pun. <laughs> well, here's the fourth one, Magnus192, <laughs> since it's $250. He's gonna make a pun, guys, don't fall. They say this Minish Cap run is really captivating. Okay, here's 250 bucks for the terrible pun fine. <laughs> so, uh, something that's worth noting is in previous starts, this is when you would normally be getting the flippers and doing that whole quest. Yeah. Uh, the flippers are actually entirely skipped in any percent now, yeah. which is something that people were looking for for a long yeah. time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's about 10 minutes of, of, uh, of nonsense. Um, I am marginally sad that we don't do it anymore because there's a, a couple of creative ocarina glitches in there, which we don't see anymore. Uh, in fact, the very first time that we do the ocarina glitch is now a little bit earlier than when we did it before. Yeah. Not by much, though. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Basically, we traded 10 minutes of nonsense for like five minutes of nonsense. And I mean, it's still two hours of nonsense. But. Yeah. <laughs> so, to be fair, it's only about an hour of nonsense. The, the first half of the run is relatively uh, That's fair. sensible. Yeah, everything cool happens like starting now. Yeah. Other than like last dungeon, but yeah. yeah. It's a good time. Yeah, for, for a little bit of context, the next dungeon that we're trying to get to is in the middle of Lake Hylia. It is the Temple of Droplets. You can probably guess why you normally need the flippers in order to get there. And you can probably guess why we would need the flippers throughout most of that dungeon. But you probably can't guess, and is... is why we're getting the boomerang instead? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It, it's, I, I was going to say it would be slightly more clear once we get there, but I don't think it will be. No, it won't be. 
So there's a trick coming up uh, that was formed by my boy Zmaster91, who's also the Four Swords Adventures world record holder, uh, oh, by the way. Um, <laughs> oops. Where uh, Core's going to be doing an ocarina glitch here that involves dying and then doing a frame perfect OG ocarina glitch off the door. So uh, there's a setup for it so that he gets in the perfect position and dies at the perfect time. So let's see if we can get it. Okay, got it. Second try, that's fine. Uh, getting picked up by the bird there is actually a little faster, by the way. If you missed it the first time. Yeah. On so, as I mentioned, clipping. So now we can walk on water. And this is the entrance to the Temple of Droplets. Yeah. That's Flipper Skip. Um, well, technically, we still need to. Mm. There's still one more. Uh, yeah, that was known for like a while, yeah. I think. Yeah, B like 2010. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it used to be the case that you could get in here without flippers. You just wouldn't know what to do in here because there, up until relatively recently, were still a few things you needed to do in the dungeon that still needed flippers, so there was no point in skipping them. So, up in, again, up until relatively recently, um, you would grab the key you see in that ice block, and then you would ocarina glitch to skip the boss key door. We're coming back for that key, though. Yeah, we are coming back for that key. Uh, so one other thing about ocarina glitches is if we go upstairs like these ones, so our layer is now changed, now we're on an upper layer. Yeah, you can go up layers with the ocarina glitch side if you cannot go down layers. Not easily, though. Like but that, yeah. That is pretty much how you go down layers with the ocarina glitch active. And that's, uh, as you can imagine, there's not a lot of choice in where you can do that, because those doorways uh, are only in a few specific locations. Yeah. All right, so we have our first ice block pushing puzzle. Uh, ice mechanics are really great in this game. I think they're pretty much flawless. I don't think any game, uh, apart from this one, has gone them as perfectly as this one has. Hmm. So now we have the boss key, and you're going to see shortly why we need the magical boomerang. <laughs> We still need that key, by the way. So yeah. We'll get that first. Also, we need Doc Green Glitch, which we need as those stairs. Yeah. It all works out. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so, apart from that little detour, you're going to see pretty much what we would normally have done at the start of this dungeon previously. All right, so here, Ezlo graciously explains to us ice block pushing puzzles. A little late, but. Oh, no. Okay, back to these ice mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> we got it, guys. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're a key part of this run. That was rough. Yeah. yeah. One of really nice things about the Pegasus boots, though, is if you're, like, sprinting on ice, um, you don't slip. Don't try that at home. Uh, yeah, Ocarina Glitch is frame perfect, so sometimes you do miss it and end up going down the stairs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Apart from that minor bit of time loss, there's no real harm in missing the timing. Right. There we go. Uh, not here anyways. So like for the door ocarina glitches that we did earlier, um, if you enter the house, you need to do like the whole setup again. So there's no like there's no backup for that one. It's not, it's if you play the ocarina again at any point while the glitch is active, you will turn the glitch off. Hey, what happened there? Don't worry about it. Yes. So as it happens, um, opening the boss key door while you're throwing the boomerang, we'll disable the loading trigger. There is another item that has this property, and it's the lantern, which we don't have yet. So that's the second part of Flipper Skip. Um, yeah, you can't should just walk through the boss door without hitting the loading zone, which lets us go out of bounds. Yeah. yeah. Historically, what we would do is we would just we would use we would grab the first key, uh, Ocarina Glitch, go up a layer in the room with the boss door, and just walk through the boss door. Yeah. So that's why we wouldn't need the boss key. But we would still need flippers in a couple of spots in this dungeon in order to solve puzzles, etc. And that boss key, boomerang boss key door, was originally found by Toad's Root. Extremely talented. Extremely handsome, talented. Handsome, smart, just all around great guy. Uh, also runs Four Swords Adventures. Completely Does he irrelevant. Have the world record in this game? Uh, in 100%. <laughs> Shout out to Blue. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, Out of Bounds is not as glamorous as you might think. Yeah. If anyone gets that reference, good job. All right. Here comes more ocarina glitches. This ha has been a historical part of the route of this dungeon. 
um, by performing that ocarina glitch there and performing some relatively specific movement. Notice we're still on the top layer. And that's just why we're not falling down here. Welcome to Minish Cap. You can jump down there as well. Uh, and by doing that specific movement, we are now to the point where we're hitting the other switch in this dungeon we need to hit in order to open the boss room. Ooh, nice. Those guys do half hour damage, so him getting out of the way is yeah. quite nice. One of the reasons that I got into this game uh, at the time that I did is specifically because I hated playing through this dungeon casually, and getting to skip half of it at the time was very therapeutic. Now we skip basically the entire thing. We skip three thirds of the dungeon. <laughs> Shut us the toast. <laughs> Shut up, Toad. I really hope what a, not what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the water element. Yeah. So it's over now. We can just go down and grab it, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who could that be? Who could that be? This may or may not be the boss of this dungeon. The, uh... Hard as we want to say the best boss of the game, but, uh... I don't really have any need to put it that way. <laughs> so there's a really new trick that was found within the past month or so. We've mentioned RNG manipulation. We've mentioned tricks in the past two months. Um, before we can get to that point, we need to get the lantern. Because oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Huh? Yeah, I played this yeah we're not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apart from a couple of tricks later on in the run, which we used the lantern to do that, uh, that door manipulation you saw earlier, uh, we also need the lantern to fight this boss. And as, as it happens, we need to find a mini boss in order to get the lantern. Uh, he may seem a little bit familiar to you. Mm, where is it? Where is it? I need a picture. This is for later. Yeah. Okay. We're good. Yes. I don't think we've actually seen any of these in the game, but there's the counterpart to the green shoes that we saw earlier, the blue shoes. We see them later. Yeah. As with the way the route works right now, this is the first time we see one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's special. He electrifies himself. You can't use the gust jar on him while he's electrified. So this is basically exactly the same as the boss of Deepwood Shrine, only we need to wait for him to stop being electrified first. Yeah. Oh, six. I find, yeah. I've been a little bit poetic that you're now at the point of the game where what you first, what you fought as the first boss in the game is now just a mini boss. You're that much stronger now. That much stronger. We're still minished, though, so... Well, Can't you win them all. I mean, you, you have the power bracelets now. That's why you're stronger, true, right? True, true. Ooh, that was five. It's all balancing out, guys. Yeah, the third phase of this boss has basically two patterns. It can either jump once and start moving immediately, or it can jump several times like this. Um, my personal preference when fighting the boss of Deepwood Shrine is for it to jump once and then just start moving immediately. Here, I actually prefer that it keeps jumping because you can't harm it while it's electrified, and the amount of time it takes to stop jumping is roughly the same amount of time for it to stop electrified. Yeah, it's way easier to time that right. way. So. Here we have the lantern. I believe it's officially called the Flame Lantern, but I just called it the Lantern. Pretty sure, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, it does pretty much what you'd expect. You can use it to light torches, you can use it to burn webs. You can use it as light in dark rooms, which I hope we don't find the point where that's ever relevant. And yeah. then we get to fight the boss of the dungeon, uh, Big Octa Rock. Good times, good times. The first, there are three phases to this boss. The first two are set patterns. Yeah, so for the first phase, it will spit rocks at you. It'll just stay in place until you reflect rocks back at it. And the room freezes over, it freezes over, you light its tail on fire. Uh, the second phase is also a set pattern. It will attempt to inhale you once, spit a rock at you, attempt to inhale you again, spit two rocks, repeat. It takes three walks in order to force it into the frozen phase again. Just like that. The third phase is the most annoying. Um, it has three possible attack patterns and it picks between them randomly.
what we're looking for. I messed up. You did mess up. Uh, oh, oh we're, we're good. We're good anyway. <laughs> so three possible attack patterns. One, which is the one we're seeing right now, is to spit three rocks, which allows us to defeat it immediately. So I think that's the first time zero rank has happened in a GDQ. Is it? I think it is. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the trick that was found recently is a manipulation. Uh, so I tried to do that. I ended up getting a charge, which is not supposed to happen. Yeah. But it was still a zero rank, so take your wins where you get them. Yeah. To elaborate on it a little bit more, uh, you saw the three rocks, you saw the charge, the second attack, and you saw, and you did not see what we do not want to see, which is the ink attack. Whereupon it will attempt to inhale you, spit one rock, and then spit out a cloud of ink, which darkens the room, takes, I believe, 25 to 30 seconds. I was about to say 30 seconds, yeah. so yeah. Uh, it wastes a lot of time, we don't want to see it. And you can get up to two inks out of your control. Yeah, uh, so which wastes if, you're, if you're keeping track, you need three rocks in order to defeat the boss. It will always spit a rock before it spits ink. So if you're, if you're timing things properly, um, the third rock before it would spit another ink cloud out again should kill it. So if you're playing properly, you never see more than two inks. Oh, first. Yeah. yeah. So as you may have noticed while we were talking about uh, Big Octo's attack patterns, uh, we saw a, um, a a vision of a past king of high roll. We um, before we would normally do anything with that, we need to get back into the castle to use the water element to upgrade the sword again. Because we have three elements now, this will give us three clones. Normally after that, we have to go visit the Tomb of Kings. Um, in order to talk to the king and get various more items that w and information that we need in order to continue on to the last dungeon, well, the second last dungeon. Um, that we don't need to do most of that. Thankfully. It has good music, but apart from that, it's not very redeeming. All right, so here we are again. This is not the last time we will be here, as you might imagine. There's the water element. And soon you will see the glorious ability for Link to split himself into three, as opposed to two. Now you can pretend you're playing a really bad Zelda game. <laughs> Three Swords <laughs> Adventures? Pretend? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, try for serious. I yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. I got you, I got you. Sometimes it takes a second. I got you. <laughs> I, I sort of <laughs> removed that one from my memory. Yes. Yeah. Also, remember the thing I said about carpets? Uh, this is another one that's, uh, that's really nice. Not here. This one that just wraps around the dungeon and gives us a really great power. If anyone can find me a carpet like that, let me know. Add me on Twitter. Quo, can I chime in for a second? You may go ahead. We have received a donation from the Yeti for $10,000. They say, hey, all Yeti here. This has been an action-packed day so far. Here's another donation, all thanks to everyone who has ordered some teas. Let's keep it going and hit that first day. 100K hype! Okay, so we just went through the portal that we opened earlier. Um, normally this person, when you go through the portal, won't let you go up the stairs. However, we can Ocarina let you just go up these stairs anyway. This is by far the biggest skip in the game, yes. even though it looks kind of trivial. Yeah, so we need to do this again to get up one more set of... Well, this person's in the way for a different reason than the other one, but we don't care. We can just Ocarina Glitch and go directly through them. And now, we are at the entrance to the second to last dungeon of the game. Please, thank you. Just in case. I don't need this fairy, but... Uh... Yeah. I'm notoriously known for dying to the final boss. Yeah, this dungeon is the Palace of Wings. It is very long. And played through conventionally is very annoying for many reasons. Uh, the boomerang actually does expedite some stuff here, so yeah. it does have uses have, other than just the oops. glitch. Yeah, normally what you need to do is use the bow to shoot those. Uh, it's a little bit more finicky than the boomerang, as strange as that sounds. Just for this purpose specifically. One more thing, if your clones take damage, they will dissipate as well. Ooh, got that. There are two bombs here, but I just blew them up. Yeah, there's... You'll, you'll see if... Well, you, I think we see a few more of these, but um, there are little floating bomb enemies. If you touch them, you take that. There's one right there. Um, if you touch them directly, you take. Uh, they blow up just like a bomb does, and you take a little bit of damage. You can poke them with your sword just like that in order to detonate them. Since it's bomb-sized explosion, you don't take damage from doing that. 
So coming up is going to be the Wizard mini boss fight. Yep. Uh, do you do Wimp Strats? Uh, maybe? What's Wimp Strats? Lamp Strats. Oh, Lamp. I heard Wimp. I'm yeah. like, oh. uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to. <laughs> uh, so using the Lamp here, you can uh, yeah. destroy these guys instantly and get a quick kill. On the third phase, it saves a ton of yeah. time. Oh, throw the bomb. Oh, no. Oh, All right, we're good. Kill we're good. One cycle. It was not known for a very long time that you could use the lantern to kill them instantly. So there are more elaborate strats than that, which involve slashing your sword really rapidly in the place of the lantern. We now have the rock's cape, the item of this dungeon. Uh, you can use it to jump. You may remember the rock's feather from Link's Awakening or the rock's cape from... Uh, I don't, seasons. It is seasons, okay. All right, we're not doing it. Uh, this is exactly that. You can even see the double jump that Seasons has. There we go. Normally, you're intended to go uh, a ways around in order to be able to land on this platform. As it happens, you can, with precise time, you can just jump to it directly. That is called the jump. The jump. The jump. We will see the jump multiple times. Yeah, we wait here for a second because we want to clone as soon as possible to when the platform reaches there. We have a very limited amount of time. You can see the charge meter in the upper left, which dictates how long clones last for. If you clone too soon, you don't have enough time in order to push that block all the way over. Oh, no. Like jump. <laughs> Flawless. Yeah, so as you can see, this dungeon introduced you to most of the rest of the relevant mechanics of the cape very early on. Yeah. I mean, you jump. Yeah. <laughs> you jump. <laughs> that's about it. You can use it to go through the grates, but that's pretty much the only other interesting thing that it does. Um, you are intended to be able to do a few things with it when you're fighting Dark Nuts because basically everything has a use when fighting Dark Nuts. They yeah. pretty much designed a lot of the items to be able to do that in some way. I, There's a cool frame saver there where if you are facing up, the spin animation cancels are away. Yeah. And here's where we need to push pots around. This is what we need the power braces for. This is the only room, and it's not even that cool of a room. Yeah. Um. So in, like, the world record run, you would skip this, but like Cor said, the trick is just way too inconsistent to do in marathons. Yeah. We'll see a version of it later, maybe? Yeah. Uh, hopefully. But yeah, I'll, we'll explain it more later. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the only way, that's the only place we need power bosses for. Um, you know, we can't keep on wishing for skips, and then we get these frame-perfect ones that are just completely One-time frame-perfect strips. <laughs> One-time frame-perfect tricks. One Please, thanks. Yeah. In rounds before we got the boomerang, we would be using the bow to shoot these switches. Yeah, boomerang's just a little more convenient. You also don't burn your arrows that way. No. The boomerang being more convenient is not something you see in a lot of Zelda runs. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. Notice we didn't need to jump off the platforms. The loading zone is just at the top of the screen, so if you can jump off the top of the screen. Yeah. All right. Maybe I should talk less when you're doing this. It's all good, don't worry. We made it. Uh, yes, those... Um, the jumps, as we call them, um, they only activate if you're in the jumping animation for some reason, yep. as if you could get to the top of the screen without it. Nice. Thankfully, we need to jump to get to them, so it's not really a problem. Yeah. All right, yeah. uh, go for it. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so come up here is uh, the trick we were talking about. It's a, the third and final known way of setting up an Ocarina glitch. Uh, so we need to do it off of a cutscene starting. Uh, so I have a bit of setup here, but again, it's really inconsistent. I was like two frames off. All right, well, we missed it, basically. That was yeah. it. If yeah. you miss it, there's no second try. Yeah. Saves about yeah, it's 45 seconds. Yeah, 40 uh, 45 seconds. This was like 30. Okay. Yeah. What it allows you to do, uh, in this room, we have a, a well, large gap. There's actually a second half to this room, which we'll be seeing in a moment. What the Ochre in English would allow you to do is just run across this gap and, and skip the next two rooms. Oof. Close. 
Uh, something I don't think we've mentioned yet is whenever you step on a switch, there's a little bit of a freeze. So uh, Quo wants to avoid stepping on switches like that whenever possible. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my. All right. All right, that was fun. Have you didn't notice those bombs were used to kill Whisper Revs? Yeah. Yeah, bombs do a ton of damage. Um, if you like numbers, bombs do 10 damage, whereas the Sword Slash does like four, I think, at this point of the game. So yeah, bombs are powerful. Yeah. We like bombs. Just grab some extra health here. Oh no, I have Boomerang on B. This is terrible. Surely you can fix this? Surely I can. Do I pause to fix it or just bite the bullet? Uh, just bite the bullet. All right, fair. All right, there's a really hard trick coming up if my boomerang's not on A. We got it, guys. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. All right, so once again, we we use that to skip the loading trigger loading, and we just walk around and skip basically the entire rest of the dungeon, which is good because it's also a very annoying dungeon to have to deal with. It's a rough dungeon, but we're at the final boss, so that's nice. Well, the final boss of this dungeon. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is uh, Georg Pair, which is three for some reason. <laughs> well, there's the red Georg, which is the girl, the blue Georg, which is the boy, and then the baby Georgs, which are green. Yeah. No relation to a certain boss from Majora's Mask, as far as we know. <laughs> right, that boss is George, not Georg. Oh, you're right. <laughs> True. Oh, wow. Okay. We'll be sure well. All right, I should have gotten that spin attack. It didn't work out. Yeah. We'll get him next Doesn't time. Doesn't make much of a As you might notice, the intended way of fighting this boss is to split in the pattern that matches its eyes and use that. You have to hit all, all of the eyes that are active within about, I think it's seven frames. I might be misremembering this. Seven sounds about right. Yeah. Um, if you hit all three eyes in seven frames of one another, um, that's intended. You guys hear faster? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so one rough part about this boss is if uh, Link gets hit or any of his clones get hit by either the, the balls or Georg, yeah. uh, they disappear. And we don't want that to happen. Thanks. Yeah. But as you can see, uh, it doesn't generally matter which pattern. Yeah. You can hit most combinations of the eyes with most pa split patterns. That works. <laughs> that works. It's called Cloneless. The Tass does that trick. Yeah. Basically the Tass, by the way. <laughs> well, Hashtag flawless. Ah, uh, we can't do it again. Oh. Sure you can. <laughs> you can't do it with that. With yeah, that you path. can't. I you can try, can. actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's the boss. <laughs> All right. And we're going to get the last element. Yeah. You might guess from this dungeon being the Palace of Winds, this is the wind element, the fourth of four. So now we just have to make one last trip to the castle, and then uh, we can go face Batty, right? Right? Yeah. 100%. Yep. That's all there's left, right? Well, we're doing any percent. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, this is you. All right, I have full health and a fairy. I think we're in good shape. Yeah. Although I have died with horse odds. Uh, we have time for a few more donations. Yeah, we, ha we have a bit before anything more interesting happens. Got you guys, it's no problem. Kylie Jerk sends us $50. She says, I wasn't going to make a donation yet, but this Minish Cap run has been just fantastic. And I wanted to make sure to thank Quo and the couch for helping this make such a great first day at SGDQ. Looking forward to many great more runs over the course of the week. We do our best. My Edward plan to ruin every Minish Cap GDQ run is failing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working, guys. Hey. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, Edward Malice sends us $50. Says, got work to do, but at least there's GDQ to watch. Loving the Minish Cap commentary. And Eliza Vince sent us $25. She says, puns and Zelda, a winning combination. Even reused ones are good, so I can't. Picori, one is my favorite. 
<laughs> Thank you, Eliza. All right. We're gonna, yeah, we'll have more donations in a second, but I just want to chime in. Um, now that our sword is now the Forest Sword, it gains one additional ability, which is uh, you can do it. What, when you do a spin attack and are fully charged, Actually, it's not fully charged, is it? Um, yeah, fully charged. Um, like, the spin attack is charged, yeah. Yeah. Um, you will shoot out a beam. Um, this does not, if I remember correctly, do damage anyway. It's just used to trigger a couple of different things. All right. It's cutscene time. We're back at the intro. You can keep going with donations. Yeah. Alrighty. Tanner Ray Johnston sends us $20. They say, I've never had the pleasure of watching GDQ live, but have always watched old speed runs that were played on here. Thought I'd leave a little bit of a donation. Thank you. $50 comes to us from Link Finn. Says, I'm loving this speed run of the Legend of Zelda the Minish Cap. Keep up the good work. Also, this is my first time donating. Yo, thanks. $25 comes to us from Danny P. He says, in 2012, I played Minish Cap with the love of my life. And while we're watching this wonderful run together, I love you, Sarah, and I can't wait to marry you in August. Keep up the great one, Quo. <laughs> we didn't be Vadi. Damn. Oh, no. We lost. It's over. Quo. Well, GG. Why, 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 right. why, why are you dying to Vadi, Quo? <laughs> Every time. Okay, we're going to do a backup strat where we need to go through Dark Hero Castle. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. All right. So we're going to see in a moment as we go down the usual hallway that Hyrule Castle is not itself. As it happens, Hyrule Castle is the last engine of the game, Dark Hyrule Castle. Quite the change from Link in the past, but then what you might consider to be the first engine is Hyrule Castle. So there's uh, a cutscene or a trick here called cutscene walking. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you did get it. So Quo uh, unleashed the spin attack and then walked into the cutscene trigger at the same time as the old man, the mayor, I guess, unfroze. And that allows him to walk during this cutscene, which saves a couple seconds because he can just walk through this door. Yep. Normally you have to wait for that animation to finish playing, but... Just... All right, now we're in the dungeon proper. We're going to start things off with... Uh... As you might guess from equipping the Okuna, we're going to be doing an Ocarina glitch right away. We'll see a few in this dungeon. Yeah. Um, the no. Ooh, okay. Ah, that was close. Uh, the intended way through this dungeon involves um, going through four mini boss fights to collect four small keys to open four small key blocks to get the boss key of this dungeon. Uh, needless to say, we are not going to get the four keys the way that we are intended to get them. So something we haven't mentioned yet is that if you roll or bonk onto something with the boots, only on, on, the, same, yeah, on oh. the same screen that you did the Ocarina glitch on, you stop lock. So Quo has to be careful to not do that. It's never happened before. It's never happened to anyone in the history of Minish Cup. So never. What are you talking about? Yeah. Didn't happen in front of a hundred people in a race. <laughs> yeah. We go at the door here just to set our uh, save point. When we still have reset now, we will spawn back at that door. That saves us having to, if we... There's a couple of points in the game when we want to stop reset to go back to that point. Here's a cool trick. To, also, uh, keep in mind the carpets. Just, <laughs> just, I, I wanted to talk about the yeah. trick, and you're just <laughs> playing. <laughs> Look at these carpets. Yeah. <laughs> what you're intended to do there is, spl is split into four and use that split into four to reflect the rocks that those statues spit back out of you. What we did instead... Um, with very Let's look at the carpets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with very precise timing, you can use a bomb to substitute two of the four sword slashes and position yourself so that you hit two of the balls at the same time. And so skip the intended split there. All right, I want to give a quick shout out to PK. Uh, he told me that you can actually uh, save and quit earlier than I normally do right here. Um, and then I did, and the last time we saved was at uh, Temple of Droplets. So I lost like 20 minutes to my run and lost a pretty decent run. I have also done that before. Sorry. Speaking of PK, he's the one that bopped me. <laughs> I'm still mad about that. Uh, we haven't given a shout out to him yet, so shout out to the Hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my guy. Hope loves this game. Yeah. Uh, Hope is the, the community cap yeah. fan. So interestingly enough, by doing, that, yeah, doing that, by doing that trick earlier, we've actually left an Ezlo trigger in place in that room. Um, so we. We're going to go through that room, I believe, one more time, and we need to avoid hitting that. Well, we don't need to, but ideally we don't hit that Ezlo trigger. 
Uh, so as you can see, we are using the Ocarina glitch to get... The first key that we got is actually intended to be used much earlier in the dungeon than we're actually going to be using it. That's one of the four keys that we're intended to get. We can get three of the four that we normally need to defeat Dark Nuts for and do other puzzles in order to get by creative use of the Ocarina glitch. What we're going to do now is we're going to get the second of those three that we can get this way, and then we are going to go fight the Dungeon's mini-boss. You can probably guess what the mini-boss of this dungeon is if you've been paying attention. Dark Herald Castle is a good hint. All right, so... First thing we need to do here is go upstairs and get that key. This is not the way you're intended to be able to enter this room if you haven't paid attention. <laughs> yeah, right now we're doing basically the entire dungeon backwards. Yep. Which luckily lets us do a little trick here. Yeah. yeah. So you have to position yourself very carefully in order to be able to jump over that door like that. Yeah, so they're only closed on one side because that's the side where you're supposed to be uh, coming from. But um, yeah, you can just jump through them like that. Yeah, it's really great. Four. All right, so we still have the Arcana Glitch activated, uh, which means that we can walk over these voids, which is great. Uh, we mentioned earlier about having trouble going down layers. It's not always super convenient. Uh, so we actually have to time this jump because we need to jump on this and then roll onto this platform, which is uh, harder to time than it looks, but still pretty easy. Now, basically, you don't drop down where you expect to drop down, and it throws a lot of people off. Yeah. This is the new hardest fight in the game because the last hardest fight we skipped now. All right, we made it. <laughs> As you can see, positioning yourself exactly right when the boss spawns just allows you to get seven hits immediately to defeat it. Yeah. You do have to time your slashes in kind of a rhythm, though. You can't just mash. Yeah. Not that I know. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not mashing. All right, so now we're going to get the last of the four. Well, this is the third of four that you're normally intended to get. We actually do need to fight these Dark Nuts in order to get them. Oh, hello. No, okay. Ah, oh, we could have got that. You can see why the cape is useful in fighting Dark Nuts. Do I do Task Drops? Let's do Task Drops. <laughs> oh, oh, so close. Cool. Cool. Well played. Good, good try. That was still faster than doing it the normal way. Don't get spooked. Ooh, ah, uh, nah, not worth it. I have a fairy. We're fine. Yeah. I believe this is the fastest of the four Dark Knight keys to get normally. Yeah. Which is why we're picking this one to get. I did that frame perfect roll thing again. <laughs> just to remind you guys that I'm frame perfect. All right. So if you've been keeping count, we now have four small keys. Uh, as it happens, we need four small keys to get the boss key. And we have a portal to the room immediately before we get the boss key. Oh, we have four small keys and 44 rupees. I like these. What a world. What a world. Yeah. That's been like nice saying lately. I don't know why. I'm probably gonna <laughs> say like a thousand times during my run tomorrow. All right. Now we have the boss key. So uh, something. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. No, go ahead. Something we haven't talked about is uh, there is an RNG manipulation for the upcoming Dark Nut fight. Are, are you doing it? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. He's doing it. Um. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So rolls and sword slashes advance your RNG. So he did a slash there, you see. That was to manipulate the RNG to hopefully give us a favorable darkness pattern. Unfortunately, there is a room where you have to go through these enemies. And these enemies, I believe, also advance RNG. Yeah. So they can mess up the manipulation if you don't get lucky. It's weird. It's like a manip. So you think it'd be the same every time, but then it isn't. I mean, it is the same every time, but you also have like a very small window to do these like slashes, for example. OK. I got it, though. So this should go as planned. Yeah. What we're looking for is the specific movement of the Black Dark Knight in the middle, which we got. And by using exactly the same reason as we did when we fought the mini-boss, you just defeat them as soon as possible. All right, I got two, uh, two dashes. That's actually really good. 
I keep on missing that in runs. The fact that I got it here is nice, except I would like to have it in runs as well. Good dark turn fight. Yeah. That fight can get very finicky without doing the manipulation. Yeah, yeah that was actually really good. I'm happy that worked out. All right, and we are now on to the final boss. He bamboozled us again. <laughs> Scooby Doo does. <laughs> So the score right now is Vaughty 3, Link 0. Just keep that in mind. Our odds are really good going though. So uh, re pretty recently, there's been a discovery that you can extend the RNG manipulation into Vaughty 1. I, I don't believe Quo is doing that. <laughs> one person does that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it the handsome, smart, talented runner? Uh, no, it's Black. Oh, never mind then. Oof. Not he's to also... say that Black isn't handsome, smart, and talented. But he's but, not German. But he's not German, and he's not my boy Toad's boot. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Like you said, this is relatively straightforward. Hit the smaller eyes uh, to get Vadi to open the big eye, uh, and then just hit the big eye until until he dies, basically. Yeah. The only wrinkle is uh, about halfway through the fight, uh, he starts putting a cloud over the eyes. You need the gust jar in order to remove that. Please. He also loves teleporting when you're trying to hit him. It's his favorite pastime. Oh, no. That's fine. All right. That's the first phase. Pretty good fight. So phase two, there's been a new strat since the last time this was a GDQ. Uh, by doing... Uh... Go ahead. No, you're good. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. What I was saying is going to come after. Yeah. Uh, so by doing... By poking body pretty much with specific sword slashes and pokes, you can defeat a mess cycle earlier than you normally would be able to. Yeah, so last time this was at GDQ. Oh, um, can I? What the hell? <laughs> Thanks. Minish cap. Uh, my okay. apologies. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wonder if it's going to work now because uh, you need to hit him a certain number. It should be fine. Yeah. Surely it'll be fine. Yeah. So what you're intended to do, as you can see, is you shoot eyes in a specific pattern. You split yourself in order to hit the four eyes at the same time in order to expose body. Oh, no. Not working. We're good. This normally takes three phases. We're going to see all three phases here. Oh. All right, I'm good. And if I didn't mess up the first cycle, this might not work. Um, so yeah, we're going to spin attack and then just turn towards body and slash him again. Oh, OK. No, I didn't get it. OK. I messed up the first cycle too much. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I'm low on arrows, too. Okay, hopefully this you, you, we should be good. Uh, we're good if I guess the next. All right, as long as this is the last cycle. Which it should be. Oh, come on. Yeah, so that trick was found like two weeks after DBX did his GDQ run. So first of all, he could have showed it off, but wasn't able to because it wasn't found yet. Second of all, it was done in a run where Toes wouldn't have gotten the record if he hadn't gotten the trick, and it's going to be a five cycle because we missed yeah. that. But he found the trick mid-run and then got the record back. <laughs> It was a rough time for DBX. Yeah. Who, by the way, still has not yeah. donated. DBX, I'm really counting on you here. Oh, uh, this is a call out to DBX. Please follow me back on Twitter. <laughs> 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 I love you, Dad. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. So the nice thing about that three cycle is you don't need extra arrows, but uh... oh, please. So uh, yeah, something we didn't talk about is Core has been equipping the boots to uh, animation cancel his bow, yeah. which ends up being faster when you're shooting four or five shots. There, there that's body right. too. So not great, but you know. I think that cost me the sub 150. <sighs> yeah, we have a little bit more to get through, as you might imagine from that comment. All right, we have time for like a few last donations. I would like to say something real quick. If we oh, hit 100K mind. by the time this one's over, I'll dab on stream. <laughs> <laughs> We're at 98,000.5 right now. Damn. That's separate from you and DBX's dab deal, by the way. That's just want to say. OK. Do we like coordinate it, though? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. OK. Anyways, donations go for it. Well, we got somebody helping out with that. Fan Gamer has donated $1,000. They say Fan Gamer is once again happy to be partnering with Games Done Quick to support Doctors Without Borders during SGDQ 2019. 100% of the profits from sales of our GDQ merch will be donated this week. Good luck to all the runners. 100K hype. 
And a uh, heart. Yes, indeed. Uh, one of the uh, final closing donations for this run as it is. Eliza113 donates $100. She says, what an epic run. Minish Cap is my favorite LOZ game. Thanks to Quo on the Couch for making this so entertaining to watch. All right, this is Vati 3, the final phase of the final boss. There's two parts to this fight. Um, the first is to get rid of Vati's arms. Uh, if you pay attention, you'll notice one of the uh, little enemy thingies has a moving eye. That's the one you want to hit. We're going to be doing this again for the other arm. So he can't actually hit you if you're on this portal, yeah. which is pretty convenient. So the normal thing to do is to wait until he puts the other arm down and then just... Uh, Pretty much the only other important use of the Lantern is to be able to see what you're doing here. Oh, I keep on counting seven. Why do I count seven? That's eight hits. <laughs> yeah. If you spend too long in there, you just get thrown out and the arm goes back to normal. All right. No, no, that's the case. The little eyes open up. We're looking for a specific attack, which we can reflect back at body in order to make him vulnerable. That's this attack. You have, well, yeah, you, you, have to, to you have to position and time yourself fairly precisely in order to reflect that attack. It's not as hard as I'm making it sound, but it is non-trivial. Okay, we need to do this three times, and then that's time. So that's once. All right. That's twice. Uh, get right on time, by the way. Yep. It'll be soon. Hopefully. I love you. <laughs> time. Time. <laughs> All right, so that was Minish Cap. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Um, so I'd like to thank Leonarth, who helped me with the text hacking to, yeah, to do the stuff. Um, him and Mike Ski, who donated earlier in the run, are actually working really hard right now on uh, developing a, what are they doing? A randomizer and map editor. Yes. And like all like ROM hacking stuff. Because that's not developed yet, so hopefully soon they'll be uh, able to push stuff out. There's version 0.3 right now, so that's coming up. Um, if you want to see more of Minish Cap, a few months ago I collaborated uh, with a channel called Speed Docs. There are two people right there. I see you. Uh, so there's like a 45 minute documentary on the history of Minish Cap. So if you like my voice and want to hear more of it, do that. Um, you want Miku? <laughs> as far as actually Minish Cap goes, uh, the community is actually really active right now. So uh, either follow the game on Twitch or join the Discord. We have a Screams channel, so you can check that out. And while you're there, you might as well learn the run. Um, there's a new tutorial coming out really soon. I was trying to get it out before GDQ, but uh, it's coming out soon. <laughs> Take my word for it. Uh, but after that, uh, thank you all so much for watching. You know, I really like this game, so I'm glad I got to show up off. Thank you to my co-commentators. Uh, they did a really good job. It's a real Debatable. Yeah. It's a real feather in my cap. <laughs> One of them did a really good job. <laughs> Uh, I think it's your no, really good job. No. Uh, it, it was a good time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Quo. Yeah. I've successfully ruined three Minish Cap GDQ runs now. We did it, guys. Thank you, Quo, very much for that fantastic Minish Cap run. Up next is Devil May Cry. Uh, that's it for me for now. I'm going to be throwing it over to the very awesome Simply AJ. But before that, let me throw it over to a quick Twitch ad. I'll see you guys on the other side.
Thank you so much to Status Quo for that amazing run and Iggy for hosting as well. I want to go ahead and uh, drop in this comment here to actually push this over into the Streets of Rage Hardest Difficulties from Andrew Sampson 31. Uh, it says, and with this donation, I gift the world the beauty of Streets of Rage on its hardest difficulty. Let's get hype. We have a $200 donation from Liquidator X07. It says, love what you do. You bring two of my favorite things together, helping people and video games, the ultimate combo. Keyed up all of you, much love. Shiva56 says, everything's been exciting so far and we're only just getting started. Looking forward to the rest of the week. Thank you so much for that $20 donation. Another big one coming in from Malamet. $250 just says thank you for continuing this wonderful event.
Elena160 comes in with a $5 donation. Says, thank you for another, or have another $5 for introducing me to an awesome Lil Tommy J Breath of the Wild remix. I'd never heard it before. Keep up the great tunes. $20 from Crate Dizzle. It says, fantastic Minish Cap run. Well done, Quo. Looking forward to Devil May Cry. Good luck, Maxi Lobes. We got $20 from Shredster7. Says it's only fitting that The Legend of Zelda is followed up by the legendary Devil May Cry cutscene. Keep in mind, guys, there is a donation incentive for the legendary cutscene. We're only about $700 off right now, so if you can get that towards the end of the run, we'll be able to show that off as well. So get those donations rolling. $20. 